thing, guys. Again, we got Dream On on the left-hand side being the Legion team, and Dynasty, of course, on the right as the Hellborn side. Real quick, though, quick shout-out to Dream Han Space Party channel in Heroes of New Earth, if you uh, see right here. If you go to Dream Han Space Party, uh, you join the channel, and you have a chance to just talk about the game. Xander Case is kind of leading the way with that, our S2 Games community manager, and you also have a chance to win some coins and some prizes, so definitely just have some fun hanging out in there if you enjoy watching Honcast and want to chat with some other fellow watchers, so uh, but yeah, so as far as this game is concerned, really looking forward to seeing what the outcome is uh, with this one, and uh, especially with Dynasty, but as you put it, this is a team that, although not too familiar with them, we have cast them one or two times, and like you were saying, even a pretty respectable team, a team that plays very well together. So uh, we'll see what they're able to do against a powerful Dream On team at the other, on the at the same token. Uh, we do have the blind bands, of course, finishing. We have Mage Bane Ophelia for the Legion team, and then Tremble Pebbles for Dynasty. So Pebbles, not nothing crazy about that, but Tremble. What what do you make a Tremble here? I'm not really sure about the Tremble pick. I mean, maybe they just value the hero generally more. Um, I don't know what too much to say about that as far as Pebbles, uh, Pebbles goes. That's pretty obvious, you know. Don't really want to give the uh, Legion team Pebbles or pretty much anybody team, any team, a first pick Pebbles, yeah. unless you have some really strong uh, strats behind you, uh, um, you know, countering that pick, where like you take Pebbles, well, I'll take these two good heroes, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's very, very, very powerful lock pool right now. We have Tundra, Silhouette, and Amphora, Tempest. Uh, I can't see the last two, but it looks like uh, Empath and Parasite. Mm -hmm. So lots of lots of power in that lock pool. Yeah, and that's where, you know, obviously the risk here for Dynasty with that Tremble Blind Ban is they left Tundra open, and of course right away locked by uh, Dream On over there. But, you know, we've talked about this before. What you, what you can do against this is then you lock uh, some powerful heroes yourself that knowing that they're most likely going to go with Tundra, that in this case right. they're probably going to get at least Silhouette and then Tempest or, you know, Nymphora if they feel it necessary with the lineup. So uh, they, they should still get two very powerful pickups themselves. But, you know, Tundra, very very good hero, so we'll see how uh, how well Dream On is able to play it and whether or not they're able to really capitalize off the fact of them getting him with the first pick. The band's finishing, Magnus, Armadon, Jerizai, Keeper of the Forest, Bubbles, and Demented Shaman. So, yeah, uh, we're going into the picking phase now. But, uh, you know, say so yeah, the locks, I mean, anything crazy about that to you? No, definitely not. I mean, that's very standard. And, and it was a great point you made is, here, here, you can take your Tundra, but I'm going to take an Enforced Silhouette, you know, yep. something like that. So that, that's, a, that's a good, smart way to do these lock pool. Um, and so good job by Dynasty by recognizing that. Maybe they have some experience with this pool, or sorry, this mode, I'm not quite sure. But uh, I'm sure teams by now kind of understand the, mm -hmm. the mode and maybe, maybe you're kind of, I don't know, getting some ideas as far as strategy goes. So uh, the Aluna first pick over here by Dream Han, and Dynasty is going to follow up with the Miraxis and Plague Rider. So uh, both some strong picks on either side. Yeah, strong start indeed for both sides. Seeing that Miraxis, usually we see him banned, so that's why we don't see him too often um, in, that, in that second round of bans. But picked up here by Dynasty. You mentioned uh, you're a big fan of Plague Rider. A little bit surprised we don't see him more, in fact. Um, so we'll see if Dynasty does run it more as a suicide lane, though, or if they play him as a support. Forsaken Archer and Wild Soul to follow up here for Dream On. So we mm -hmm. talked about Wild Soul and Fnatic the other day. We are covering them, how Trixie's been actually playing that recently for them. What do you think about Wild Soul here on Dream On? Um, I think he's, I think he's okay. I, I think, um, actually, Dream On has drafted or, you know, tried this hero out several times in scrims. Mm -hmm. But usually, I believe it's played by Les QQ, who is not playing today. True. So does, does doesn't he usually normally play? Does he play in spot of uh, who was Chubby, Chubby Chris, Chris? Who I believe, yes, yeah, who okay. he would play in place of. But Les QQ was going to the army. Uh, correctly as well, so I, I think he might have actually started that, so um, that could be a reason why Chubby Chris 2 is stepping in. But yeah, so we'll see who ends up playing Wild Soul, but Glacius the final pick from Dynasty, but here we go. So Tundra, and then the response was Silhouette and Nymphora, and so now the final pick here for uh, Dream On coming out. Of course, they got Tempest if they feel a jungle makes sense here. They already got a Wild Soul though, but they can easily run either Wild Soul or Tempest in the lane for that matter. Probably Wild Soul if they do that, but you also got an Empath who can synergize pretty well with the Forsaken. Then, of course, Parasite has another jungle choice. But they go with Tempest instead. Um, both teams, honestly, this is actually... I look at both sides. I don't see either one really having the true outpicking. Yeah, uh, I, what we'll probably see here, my guess, is a long lane Suicide Wild Soul. 
and uh, an Aluna for second archer bottom. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to say because you don't want to lane your carry against a Plague Rider who is most likely going to be going bottom, maybe even be soloing bottom, and maybe we'll see a tri lane top of the silhouette. Yeah. I don't know, actually, um, both teams have lots of options here, so I'm curious to see uh, you know, what happens. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be, uh, again, a f uh, good game in the sense, uh, at least when it comes down to picks. Both teams clearly showing that they actually know uh, what, what, they're, what they're doing, at least somewhat here. So uh, we're going to have, a, of course, a pause to start off the game. Apparently some graphic issues, as it sometimes happens. So going to get the restarts going and then eventually moving on in this game here. But, yeah, the laning phase is going to be intriguing here. Like I said, you know, Plague Rider especially. Are we going to see him play? I, I actually, with the lineup, I would think Plague Rider is going to be playing that uh, solo style role, um, even in a suicide lane if they choose to do so, and that's where she can or he can really shine with that extinguish, of course. So, um, Aluna Forsaken Archer currently headed towards that bottom lane, so we'll see if that uh, plays a role here. Maybe expect to see the Wild Soul top and then Tempest Jungle, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll yeah, I, do I expect to see. Not, yeah, definitely. Um, like a Maraxis top. Lake bottom, and then maybe like a, a dual lane mid with silhouette, like a silhouette Glacius, and then maybe Maraxis Nephora top. That would be probably a very, very strong lane composition there for Dynasty. And then, um, you know, the thing about FA and uh, Luna, they could potentially go top, but that's very dangerous. Um, I mean, they are going to be laning against that Plague Deny. It sucks, but you kind of have to deal with it, because if you go top and you lose, that's pretty much game over. So, um... You know, they they could do like a pseudo trialing with Tempest, but that's kind of risky as well because Tempest isn't the most effective ganker early on. He's also very mana dependent because those con that conversion spell costs so much mana. The uh, elemental spell it's 180 mana, so every time you try to go gank and use Glacial Blast, that also costs a lot of mana, and it really um, really cuts into your farming. So that's why you don't necessarily see a long lane or sorry a long lane like pseudo trialing with Tempest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, even at just a level 2, if he has both, it's 100 mana plus 180, so yeah, 280 mana, which he doesn't even have enough mana for without any items, but of course with them would, but yeah, that's definitely an interesting way to look at it. So all players have reconnected, so just a matter of actually being ready and then coming out of this pause. So again, this is game one here between Dream On and Dynasty. Uh, of course, uh, it kind of uh, came down to a point where wasn't originally planned to cast this match, but still at the same time, I'm happy that we are, because uh, it is a very good matchup, and uh, excited that we're getting the opportunity to do so. It looks like our Legion team is ready, of course, Zai being Umzai, formerly of Black Fade, as really is most of this team, uh, with also Keizu and Insania. Uh, but here we go, coming out of the pause, and now we're going to get a better idea of how they are going to set things up. It looks like good old Silhouette Moraxis lane going bottom. No, just kidding. <laughs> They're probably going to set up a attempt to set up a gank down there, if not a protective for the ward placement as we talk about. So Glacius with that ward heading down there as well. Uh, but Plague Rider is going top, so they are going to have Plague Rider in the short lane, it looks like here. Ooh, I kind of like this. I kind of like this. If they do a, a tri-lane bottom... A strict tri lane bottom. I don't know who would go mid. Probably uh, Silhouette. Um, this could be really good for them. The only thing is they got to get that ward on and make sure they don't get ganked from Tempest. That's going to be huge. Yeah. If they can avoid the ganks from Tempest, who's you know most likely going to be in this jungle here, in the, in the you know above the top lane, just to get the deny there for uh, for um, a Wild Soul. But as soon as he walks over here, if they can prevent these ganks, in fact, even put aggression on Tempest in the woods. This is actually really good lane set up here by Dynasty. I like it a lot. Yeah. See them using the couriers, scouting things out just in the in the front of them to see if they spot anyone, but not going to do so. They're going to run right by Ward Aside here, though, so of course they'll let uh, pretty much let Dream On know what they're kind of doing here as all four of them in the jungle, but yeah, we'll see if it turns out being a trial enemy so far. Glacius and Amphora, they are heading down here with more access. Silhouette going to the middle lane, so um, we'll see. I mean, still not, nothing definitive yet. Um, but our Legion team, they have uh, adjusted to send Tundra bottom. You got your Forsaken Archer, Aluna mid. And then, of course, Wild Soul still at top and Tempest. Well, it looks like, uh, well, we'll see if he goes to the bottom or the top jungle, actually. As he's currently making his way down, down the mid lane. But, yeah, probably going to go to the bottom jungle. You see the Elementals, in fact, already over here, ready to pull the camp as soon as it spawns at 30 seconds. So... 
Um, yeah, we see a Glacius, though. She's actually, oh, oh, or he, I should say, in this case, already adjusting middle as a result of this forsaken Aluna lane here. So a lot of early adjustments going on for both teams. Yeah, and uh, one thing I want to mention, I really don't like what Center just did there. He, um, he power shot while Glacius was sitting over here, actually where Nymphor just was. And he would have to have absolutely no idea that he was there unless he did have a ward spotting there. So if Dynasty is really on top of their game, they should know that they have a ward there, and that would be like easily countered right away. So I don't like the fact that he power shot there. Yeah, I got some damage, but you gave your, you totally gave away the fact that you have a ward there. So uh, I definitely would have, would not have done that. Maybe he just blind sniped. There's always that possibility <laughs> too. Yeah, probably His not. His game sense is off the charts. Yeah. What do you think of this very aggressive middle ward site, by the way, placed by Sender here in the middle lane? Um, I think it's fine. I don't. Uh, maybe they just want vision of any kind of TPs that are coming out. Um, but, yeah, I'm not too sure. They, I think they just want complete vision of the mid lane. Yeah, you do see they're going to try right here. The crippling volley will catch Tempest going over the side. The tree grab are going to be used, but not going to be enough. Bloodlust kill coming out for Team Sender. Or, uh, again, the tag kind of screws me up. But dream on, officially. Uh, so, good start for them, and uh, well executed, actually. Tempest kind of went around, acted like he's maybe going to the jungle, and... Sure enough, came to complete the gank in the middle lane. Silhouette did his best to get away, but obviously wasn't in time. Yeah, I think I, the, the tree grapple to the right side would have been much better. It was very, very close to maybe not latching on, but uh, the, the top one was just, he was a little bit too close to those Tempest auto attacks and uh, eventually uh, fell to the sender who actually got the last hit there. So yeah. it's going to be a good jump start of a farm for him. Yeah, that's going to be uh, really good for Chubby Chris too as well. Kind of getting a... A bit better presence here in the middle lane. Currently after an 8 and 5 star compared to the 3 and 4 silhouette. Obviously very early on, but uh, much better start here early on with that said. Bottom lane, more axis. In this case, the, the chainsaw axis. Or I guess, wait, more chainsaws, I guess. Would be more appropriate way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you get the point. He's currently at a 13 and 8 farm compared to a 5 and 0 oh tundra. So clearly more axis down here. Being played by Gorilla, actually, is uh, really having a good time. Of course, Tundra has had to deal with some support that's been nearby with Nymphora. Speaking of Nymphora, though, they're currently in the middle lane. They're standing right on top of a ward of sight, though. So um, you see uh, both the Luna and Forsaken Archer. Not necessarily giving that away, but uh, they are uh, they are very aware that Glacius and Nymphora are going to attempt for a gank. In fact, they're going to go in once again right here. They're going to get stunned first, however. Out comes a crippling volley. In comes a great tree grapple. And actually, Sender playing that Aluna in a little bit of trouble. There's a ninth a snipe right there with the Death Lotus. Health potion used by Nymphora. Find a lot of attack. Not enough for the kill. And she will end up surviving. Glacius mm -hmm. should be able to get out of here as well. So that worked out very well here. For, uh, for Dynasty, although Crippling Volley is going to catch and actually for second after making another kill. Nice seal stun, but no, it actually didn't even hit. And down goes Glacia, so at least Forsaken Archer got a kill in the end there. Yeah, that was that was good by Chubby Chris. Very nice pursuit there, knowing that he stood, could still get the kill uh, all by himself. But um, good gank, nonetheless, they were able to get a kill from the silhouette and good job by Tail. Tale, Tail? I know they're Brazilian, I think, so maybe it's... I, I don't know, I'm going to butcher his name. But, um... Uh, good Death Lotus uh, aiming there, right there, to get the kill on uh, Aluna. Yeah, it was very nicely done. Uh, as you see already, about a minute and a half ago, that ward that I was just talking about was just countered. So it was very obvious, and a uh, good job there by, I think it was Glacius who kind of the uh, ordered him for, not sure. But um, I don't think they know about this new ward here by Sender. Um, yeah. But oh my god, the tower has already been killed. With the power <laughs> of Wild Soul and Tempest there. Yeah, nothing really Playground could do by himself. Obviously, Nefora came in at the last second, and as did Glacius. But oh, they may turn this around. Actually, Wild Soul getting caught, and Wild Soul will end up falling. Goo there on Glacius, turning that around with the Ice Imprisonment, and Umzai did not see that coming. So he definitely overstood his boundaries. So, yeah, I mean, got the tower kill, but kind of uh, threw himself into a death right there. But still, the tower kill. Brings in quite a bit of economy here early on for the Legion team. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's great. The only thing I, I worry about is I, I feel like uh, when you push a tower too early like that, you got to get some wards up now and be very aggressive. Sender's already used a ward here bottom, a ward mid. Um, hopefully you get some new wards up. I don't see any on him yet. He's delivering himself some boots now. Oh, wait, no, that's not his boots. Those are second archer's boots. Um... So, no, yeah, definitely. I mean, the tower kill is always great. They're going to have a great uh, gold boost, and Tempest is sitting on 300 gold. Already has his uh, Ring of Sorcery as well as a TP scroll. Wow, that's a very, very fast farm there for him. Yeah. Uh, having the assist is what um, 
has a tower kill right now, so yeah, his farm is fantastic. And actually, they switched up lanes as Miraculous has one mid, and he's getting uh, initiated on here, actually. As Steam Boost delivered, so he's going to be a little more tanky. And then they switched up and put um, Silhouette bottom now against this Tundra. I think it's a smart decision. Well, I was going to say, with that tower kill, kind of what you're going off of, do you think it would actually make more sense? By the way, Silhouette playing a lot of pressure here to Tundra at the bottom lane. Uh, with that double damage rune, but not going to be nearly enough for a kill. But do you think that might be better off sending Tundra top because of that push that's happening there at the top side and trying to maximize her farm, or do you think she's still having a good time at bottom lane? Or Tundra top, or Silhouette or top? Or Silhouette top, yeah. Um, I think that, I think until she's struggling bottom, like if she okay. if she knows that the are gone, right now she's farming fine, so there's no reason to switch her, you know? She's already getting a yeah. decent farm. She has a double damage. Look at this top tower push, by the way. This is ridiculous. I mean... <laughs> It's already down to 360 life. Uh, Boo Boo is just so strong with the elementals, and uh, there's not just not much the Hellborn team can do to stop that. I mean, they they really just got to get it come all together as far as supporting in and meeting up here if they want to stop this. But it's obviously a lot easier said than done. So one more one more creep. I mean, this this tower may very likely fall here. Eh, no, never mind. Tempest is actually going to pour it out, so they're going to not go for the push. Um, so that'll be done for now. But yeah, a lot of damage on the tower. We do see Silhouette actually porting back to base. And we'll see if she actually ends up going to uh, the top lane or if she actually heads mid, which she currently is doing. So giving up on that bottom lane for now as it was pushed up quite a bit there, as we saw. Uh, Moraxis is level 6, so of course he's got his Matrix ability. And able to tank even more damage now if he finds it necessary. Glacius and M4 are still level 2. Right, and you compare that to the support on the Legion side, that they're, they're definitely under. Yeah, and that's the great thing about drafting a, a, a jungler is you always get, you're always going to have that experience lead, regardless of tower pushes or anything like that. Um, and you know, that's just why people pick junglers is because it's like, well, we could pick a support or we could get like a support esque hero that gets a lot of farm and, gold, uh, and experience as well. So that's why junglers are so popular. Um, but yeah, these, this Nymphor and Glacius at both level 2, that is bad news bears, especially for an Nymphor. I'd say Glacius being level 2, like, that's bad and all, but not the biggest deal. He still has got his two main spells. Nymphor, you got to hit that, that fast level 6, because that is why people pick Nymphor. Yeah. It's for that port ability. Yeah, getting that, uh, you know, to either go with Silhouette or even more Axis when he gets that portal key, very, very effective. So... I'm um, not going to have that in the near future, though, because the start, but look at this silhouette initiative right there. Down goes a little. The plague is going to come out. His tap is over to Chubby Chris 2 right there. I'm not going to bounce after that because no minions nearby, but Forsaken Archer will end up going down. So Dynasty putting it all together here in the middle lane and completely collapsing onto Dream On as they take them out. They're going to port to the top lane now. Uh, at least Glacius will, because you do see a Wild Soul who has his ultimate activated. He's going to continue to push this top side with Boo Boo and go for the tower kill, perhaps. We'll see after this cannon destroyed. There we go. There goes oh. Boo Boo with the ghost marchers, and they are going to go for it. And yes, he is going to get it. Uh, middle lane looks like Plague Rider nearly died, but he was able to stay alive. So, I guess I'm missing some yeah. middle action there. Yeah, that was a really cool Luna stun right there. It went bounce, 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 and barely hit the uh, Plague Rider, who was very far away. It just looked really cool. But yeah, that was a great. Um, a great thought there by Goo playing that Glacius is they got they got those great kills in mid and then they immediately he immediately poured up top was like let's save this tower if he had one more person I feel like they could have saved the tower maybe even put some aggression on the wild soul there um, so unfortunately no one else was able to follow up with that TP but now some more some constant pushing here in the mid lane from uh, from Dream On yeah they're gonna try once again you see piercing shards coming up power throw will hit. Uh, Nymphora right there, but she's going to end up surviving. Of course, the tower, again, it survives, but it is uh, a lot of damage happening to it. Already down about 270 life or so. A wild Soul nearly died himself, too, at the top side. Almost uh, didn't catch that, but Silhouette actually killed the bear as it was trying to run away, and that <laughs> nearly killed Wild Soul. A lot of people forget that. You know, Boo Boo, if she goes down, he, that will do damage to Wild Soul as well. That's that connection after all, so um, nearly got the kill from that, but uh, Wild Soul did end up living, but a good attempt nonetheless. It's still, Silhouette, of course, had some farm out of that even, so not too bad for her. And speaking of that, Silhouette is farming around 281 gold per minute. Not too shabby. She's got Steam Boots bottle early on, and uh, we'll see whether or not she works on something like that Null Stone or a uh, more aggressive route, but uh, as far as the Legion team is concerned, you do got Forsaken Archer up there. Really, as a team, looking very good. I can't say it's too surprising, you know, though at the same time, especially with all the tower pushing that's been going on, but Forsaken Archer lead of the way, but it doesn't drop off much further after that with the next three heroes. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, they got a good farm on pretty much all their 
all their heroes, and it's simply because of tower pushing. That's why tower pushing is so great. Not because it's like the carry gets the farm, but it's honestly because you distribute the farm among your entire team, so your supports get farm, and your supports really kind of jumpstart every game for your team. I mean, when you get, you know, a Loon with fast boots and a Tempest with the um, steam boots and, and a ring of sorcery, and they don't really have another support other than that, but uh, it just spreads the farm out, so every hero has a, just a, you know a little bit, rather than dumping everything onto like a silhouette or dark lady, which is good in its own regard. But um, you know, tower pushes are always always great, great news for supports. Yeah. Now look at these triple stacked agents here from Dynasty. Silhouette's gonna get a lot of farm out of this, or at least that's the goal with it. Of course, he's uh, taking a little bit of damage here, so he needs to be careful. But another death load is coming up in two seconds. Once she has that. Very likely maybe able, may able to snipe it down and uh, be calm. But there we go. Zilson on top to help. But, so, yeah, good triple stack ancients coming out here from Silhouette. Um, her GPM dropping a little bit there since we last talked about it. But after this, it should uh, shoot right back up. But still for the Legion team, they do remain in the lead when it comes to that once again. This middle tower is getting very close to deny range. In fact, there we go. It is in deny range now uh, as a result of this ballista. And that'll actually be able to be denied here by more axis, pending some crazy situation. So there we go. <laughs> Good deny at least. Coming out for the Hellborn team. And especially with the aggressive tower pushes happening so far this game, you know, want to try to minimize the amount of towers they actually kill if they are going to be going down. So Good uh, good play right there, more axis. You got to think maybe that portal key going to be next in line for him with the Mystic Vestments and Power Supply even picked up since the Steam Boots here. Um, and of course, that's where he starts to really sh take off and shine. Nymph 4 is level 4, so she's trying, but. Still a couple levels away from that ultimate, so just not able to be aggressive with that just yet. Um, ooh, more access by the we're the teacher th or life tube there, so actually going to go home with the Black Legion first. But silhouette, what do you think silhouette should go for here with her first item choice? Um, I don't like to see. Now I, I constantly talk about how shrunken head's so important, but I actually would not buy shrunken head here. I think uh, actually, a fir honestly, a first item geometry thing would be very, very good. Actually, Tundra here, cold shouldering. Oh wow! Wait, what a what? great, what a great W there from Araxis. It totally wow. canceled out Tundra's ulti. Great job there by Gorilla. Yeah. Out playing the Kezu. I, that completely caught me off guard. Right? What just happened? But that makes sense. The arcane shield right there, being used by Moraxis against the Avalanche, and sure enough, completely nullified it. So very well executed. Now the bottom tower does go down here in favor of uh, the Legion team. So you saw that they were here to attempt to deny it, and unfortunately we're not able to do so. So yeah, actually that was a big misplay even. Coming out from Dynasty was almost a four versus one it looked like, so. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so did you suggest though what you, what you want to see on Silhouette? I'm sorry. Oh, I think a Geometer's Pain would be okay. great. Um, Nullstone, uh, Nullstone could be good as well. Uh, something like a Nullstone Geometer's Pain. I, I, I think pretty much the standard build. Nullstone, Nullstone, Shield Breaker, Geometer's Bane, something like that. Yeah, That would be just fine. But uh, right now, they're getting kind of massively out-farmed. I mean, Wild Soul has the, always can, the potential to farm pretty much anywhere because that bear can tank any damage. Um, and they're spreading out farm among all their heroes. They're doing a really good job uh, on Dream Hunt over here. Yeah, you see Wild Soul, speaking of him, farming anyway. He's currently at the top lane again, pushing it up quite a bit once again with the Creep Wave. And going to go work in the Legion jungle where he's been actually quite often, as, or the Hellborn jungle, excuse me as he's been quite often. He currently has another 1,500 gold saved up as well, by the way, so... Yeah, I mean, it could be getting to that point of the shrunken head, as is... Or, wow, pff, shrunken head boo-boo. Uh, the <laughs> Mocker Brilliance, that's totally what I meant to say. Uh, pick up here for Wild Soul. Uh, so we'll see if indeed that is what it is, or if he maybe changes it up a little bit for whatever reason. But yeah, expect to see that Mocker Brilliance, really. Um, I mean, do you, from Wild Soul? Uh, yeah, definitely mock of brilliance. He went actually some very interesting items before that. The 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 face, the ghost mark is on the bear is standard, but uh, he completed his steam boots on his on himself. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I I actually really really love striders on Wild Soul, and it's because when you um are in your ulti form at level or well, I guess it doesn't really matter what level, but when you're ulti form and you have the max level uh wild, you actually run at a max movement speed. With Strider, e even in your ulti. So uh, I really, really like Striders. It's a very, very quick, cheap pickup, 
and it's very effective. But uh, to each their own. Uh, Steam Boots is fine as well. I don't think it really matters. But it does uh, put him back about a thousand gold that yeah. he could have had towards a uh, you know an early uh, mock of brilliance, which is sort say, of the high. Yeah, that's the biggest difference. Obviously, the price difference between Steam Boots and the Strider. So you could argue that maybe it's just worth that investment. But go on the Steam Boots right instead. Um, and uh, definitely changing those on and off. He currently has them set to agility, and now switching them over. The intellect, as soon as you use a while, we talked about that the other day, you know, switching of the steam boots if you are going to purchase them just really amplifies, you know, what they bring to the table. And, uh, that's, you know, if you're, uh, if you're a top-tier player, you most likely find that they do that. So, yep. um, Silhouette farming away at the jungle. Again, it seems like Dynasty's been doing a pretty good job of keeping the camps actually stacked fairly effectively. Uh, from what I've seen with the Ancients, in fact, right as I say that, the 60-minute mark, and sure enough, the stack happens at the Ancients. She just cleared up a triple stack in her own jungle, so, you know, got to give credit to the support here for uh, for Dynasty of making sure Silhouette's and maximizing her farm as much as possible, and it's showing. I mean, she's now up to 346 gold per minute, and she, get, and she goes for a Blessed Orb, by the way, as her first item. So still kind of up in the air in terms of what that ultimately is going to be. Um, but uh, obviously a good choice there, good good amount of stats early on. Speaking of that, Forsaken Archer did also go for a, a Blessed Orb. And then Tundra actually picked up his portal key a couple minutes ago. So we'll see him start making use of that, I'm sure, uh, with that and the Avalanche combination. So Hellboy team will need to be a little bit cautious of that. Speaking of portal key, more Axis, though, just picked one up himself. So we're starting to see uh, progressing now uh, later on in the early game stage, now coming up to the 17-minute mark, some uh, bigger items being picked up here from both sides. Yeah, did he sell his uh, life tube or something? I guess he did, yeah. Yeah, because I saw him pick that up, too, and I was looking to see maybe a Helm of the Black Legion pick up, but no, yeah, he goes to the portal key. So maybe he just sold that back recent, or right away, and we just didn't catch yeah. it. Um, but yeah, portal key, great pickup right there. Um, they got to make a move here. Um, Nymph 4 is almost level 6. Maybe they're waiting for that. They probably just waited for the portal key from Maxis, and maybe they're looking to do something here, because uh, I don't see them winning this late game. I mean, Silhouette... It's a very strong late game, so is Nymph 4, but, I mean, you got a Wild Soul, that's potentially 12 item slots on one hero, as well as the, uh, you know, the Tempest has the Black Hole, uh, the Forsaken Archer is always a great late game carry, and then the, the Tundra with the Hawk, I mean, you're fighting into some pretty scary late game right there, so uh, they gotta make a move here. Yeah, and look at what's happening on the top lane. I mean, already pressuring the base, even only now coming up to the 18-minute mark. The tower is going to start taking damage because of those elementals. You see Tempest, he's going to homecoming stone out. But Wild Soul, on the other hand, maybe in a little bit of trouble. Morax is putting a nice job with Boo Boo right there. He spawned it, it actually took the axe for him. And he is able to kind of get away. So yeah, that was actually pretty good timing on Umzai's part. But still, even probably wasn't going to catch up to him. But at least it looked pretty, so... Good get away yeah. from Wild Soul, though. Uh, but, you know, Morax is definitely showing that he has the portal key, of course. And if he finds that opportunity, we'll definitely look to use it. Nymph 4 is still not level 6. They're trying. They report to the bottom lane because Silhouette getting caught. Actually, Trigger Apple is not going to happen. She wasn't able to get it off in time. Are they going to initiate? There comes a Quakes down after the portal key. And Tundra will fall, so at least they get some revenge here for Silhouette. But still, Legion team successful on the Silhouette gank. Tundra using his own portal key with that Avalanche combination. However, with four players here now, they're going to take advantage of this a little bit and maybe push the bottom lane, but this could get a little bit risky because you look at what's happening on the mini-map. The top and middle lane are being counter-pushed by Dream On here. Yeah, they're doing a really smart job. And, uh, you know, you take your eye away from Wild Soul for one second and and your base is gone. I mean, it's really... And actually, did, does just pick up a sort of the high. Nymph yeah. 4 does have that level 6, and they're, they're going to search for this Wild Soul in the jungle there, but they're going to find a Luna as well, who actually has no mana, so it's kind of scary there. Tempest is ready with the Black Hole waiting. Uh, but actually they're just going to back away. So they did try to use an M4 port, but unfortunately weren't exactly able to find them. Yeah, that was a good attempt right there. But So that's the good news, though. They do have an M4 level 6 as well. But as you said, Sword of the High just purchased um, on Wild Soul. So expect that Mocker Brilliance to be coming out. It's 1350 gold now, I believe it is, for the pattern. And uh, we'll have that complete. And, you know, against a... Uh, against a more access portal key that could be very effective, you know, countering that as we talk about. So, as well as just being an all-around powerful item on uh, Wild Soul, specifically Boo Boo in this case. So, uh, Silhouette, she actually just delivered a life tube, so that gives you pretty confident idea mm. that that is going to turn into a Null Stone here. And it seems like you might want to see the fire or the geometer's pain instead. Um, no, I, I think Null Stone is great. I mean. I think you have to get both, so you're going to have to go Null Stone and then Geometer's Bane. Oh, yeah. uh, the thing about Geometer's Bane 2 against Tempest is when they use those uh, Glacial Blasts from Tempest, if you Geometer's Bane out, you're still going to get stunned if you're in Vision. 
so uh, it's not the greatest counter to him. I mean, it does get you out of the volley, but uh, Null Stone's kind of a necessity for Silhouette. Nine times out of ten you want to get it just because simply the, the regen and you're constantly spreading around the map. You don't want to get stunned before you port your illusion if it is somewhere else. So, uh, yeah, Null Stone's pretty standard and I, I think it's fine here. Tundra's been invisible this whole time. They had a little bit of an opportunity to make a jump right there, but they chose not to. Uh, you see right there, though, Tundra does have a bound die. And already using it to take out a revelation that was placed in the middle lane by the Hellborn team. We might have spotted him coming. So Tundra's going to portal key away as the Hellborn team still making a point that they're going to keep the aggression up. What is Silhouette doing all the way up here by herself in a lot of trouble, actually? She needs a support, and she is going to get it. So she's going to be fine. Look at Moraxis going balls to the wall. Great jump, actually. It's Tempest. Tempest is a quick tablet out, though. But there's the Matrix activated. Is the Hellborn team going to be able to follow this up effectively? They need to spread, of course, waiting for that play. Good. Tempest falls back. Nice crippling volley catch by for second archer on top of the piercing arrows but not nearly enough damage going to come for that. So both teams going back and forth, but while this is happening, look at Wild Soul. The Legion team taking big advantage of this right now. They're pushing the top lane, or Wild Soul is. You see him take out the tower. He actually cancels his port in the middle lane back over here. The Legion team cleans him up with the Venice Ultimate. He catches him, and down goes the three heroes. The ports that happen with Glacius and Moraxis. Glacius oh, will no. fall, though, and Moraxis is the sole survivor. So my guess is they tried to port out right there. But the Legion team stopped them. They're going to take out the melee racks now. Wow, the game just completely went in the side of Dream On if it wasn't already. Yeah, it seems, things collapsed there for them. Um, great, uh, great initiation to understand that you know they were trying to maybe TP back and prevent this Wild Soul from from pushing. Then info, I I didn't see it as well. I saw that info report behind Wild Soul. And then I don't know if he canceled himself, but maybe he got stunned. But either way, that was a really great job by Zai to realize that the, the port was no longer happening and then pressed on and was able to get a huge kill on the Glacius. I mean, he just decimated him. Yeah. And then and they get the Rax as a, as a follow-up. And, ooh, that, that, was, that was really well played and great communication. You can just tell the communication was there uh, fully from Team Dream on. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Uh, for Dynasty, that's also got to be one of those heartbreaking moments. I mean, you actually, you, you had a chance yourselves to get a good fight going in the in the middle lane. Obviously, Moraxis had a pretty good jump on a Tempest, uh, but Tempest with that Tablet of Command, an interesting item pickup in itself, uh, at least first, but going to Tablet of Command, managing to help get away with that, and uh, obviously a great spread on their part, and they, just good distraction overall. I mean, they bought the time for Wild Soul to just constantly push that top lane, and then it, they got Dynasty to panic after that after the initial jump did not work for them. So um, they basically ended in, a, it, well, it ended in a near genocide at least. They got the racks, and all of a sudden, Dream On is now up 16,000 gold, 12.4 thousand experience, and we just passed the 23-minute mark here in game number one between Dream On and Dynasty. So Dynasty has their work cut out for them big time. not saying that it's over, but Silhouette, you know, she's going to need to really step her game up here. Uh, if they want to start coming back because you compared it especially to Forsaken Archer alone and she's already at 468 gold per minute and counting. She's finished her geometer Spain and uh, I'm sure while on her way in fact she has another 3200 gold saved up towards her next item. Morax is trying to catch Wild Soul right here but he respawns Boo Boo. He's going to go for an Entangle Root and there we go. Boo Boo will end up falling um, but he's going to of course bring him right back up and in fact the Legion team may try to counter onto this but uh, the W is mm. activated and he's going to be fine so but, yeah, this is difficult now for Dynasty here. Yeah, and Boo Boo was just able to take out most of those triple set ancients, so all that good job that the supports on Dynasty have been doing was kind of futile as, uh, you know, while so saw it was like, it's mine, bitches, and then <laughs> took it. I will say as well, and this seems, I, I'm curious what, what your take is on this. You said you actually play a bit of Wild Soul, or maybe yep. that's, okay, so, uh, the ultimate. I mean, sometimes we see players come have that on 100%. Other times, in this case, we see Umzai, you know, he, he doesn't necessarily have it on a whole lot. He seems to like the range form more. Yeah, I definitely like the ultimate form way more. Uh, the range form is good for moving around because uh, you get more movement speed. It slows your movement speed down when you do ultimate. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, the, the, I mean, look, you give 400 max health, you get more armor. And then you get the battle cry, which gives you even more armor and damage. Um, it's just like like I said, with the striders pickup, it doesn't matter because you can be just as mobile um, as a, as if you weren't in your um, old form. So I definitely I definitely prefer to always be in the old form. Um, you know, it's not like tr it's not like steam boots where it's like oh if they go on me I'll just switch them to, to strength and I'll and then I'll be more tanky. It has a cast time on your ultimate, so it's not like you can really. I'll play someone like they initiate on you and then bam I switch to my ultimate. Yeah. Can't do it. So that's why I like to constantly be in my old form. Yeah. 
Well, like I said, though, Mzai in this case, he's definitely preferred the range form more here. Um, Soul's Bulwark, though, just finished on him and was, well, again, I should say Boo Boo, as now that's something else that they're going to be able to use. But look at more action jumping in right here once again on attempts. going to try to make something out of the bouncing around back and forth. The split up front for second Archer, but she's going to end up dropping right here. So actually a pretty good catch, pretty good start here for the Hellboy team. Tempest going back in, and Sanio wants to try to catch them with the Black Hole. It's not going to happen, though. Glacius going down. Tempest running in, and there's a Tempest. All the men pulling in three heels. A Zeal stun will hit, but it's a little bit too late. It looks like Silhouette, however, in the background. She did port out, and you see the auto attacks coming out. Nice tablet from Tempest right there, barely staying alive. Again, that pressure is still on. Silhouette realizes that she's dropping now, and Silhouette will fall to the ground. Umzai doing so much damage there with that Mocker Brilliant Spare. There's a GG well played, and it looks like it'll be official here in game number one after that fight. Dream on! We'll be up one game to nothing going into the second game here. Yeah, that's just, I mean, you know, we, you, t you asked me if, uh, if I really liked how he was not in ultimate form there. It doesn't really matter. The fact is, Wild Soul is a friggin' strong hero. And when you get a lot of early farm on him, like they had with those tower pushes from, uh, you know, the assistance from Tempest coming up there. there. I mean, yeah. I think they got that top tower in like four minutes. Yeah. And then they just kind of pressed their lead. They stayed up there. And that's actually a really smart thing to do against a Plague Rider because obviously it works well against the deny. It's like you're going to deny and make it, you know, push towards the tower. Well, cool, I'm going to push it harder. So, uh, you know, it's a very good pickup there, uh, picking up the Wild Soul, and, uh, you know, Zai played it really well, so props to him. Yeah, and again, for Dynasty, uh, they definitely show that they are a skillful team in that game one, and I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them, you know, make a strong comeback here in game two, but... Uh, really that, that one fight where in the middle lane they tried to catch Tempest, they tried to start something, but while it's low, pushing that top lane while that was happening, the big distraction, and uh, we saw the end result of that with the Rats getting cleared out, a near genocide, and you can kind of tell that after that, really, Dynasty kind of lost their firepower, and they just weren't going to be able to recover from that. So, But at the same time, definitely well played.